Welcome to Royal Malarkey. Yeah. Oh, you hit the record button and didn't tell me again. Do, 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 do. Got it. It's what I do, isn't it? It is. It I'm is. not ready. And then you yell at me for not looking at the screen. <laughs> Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. It's fine. But I let's have just things. Get started. Hello, world. You missed me. Didn't get to itch my nose. Every time you itch your nose, I itch my nose. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome to episode 27. I guess we're going to do it all in a British accent. Well, if you keep talking that way, I won't be able to stop it with I. <laughs> okay, and stop. <laughs> See, I have to laugh not in British. Can you uh -huh. laugh in British? I don't know. <laughs> That's how you laugh in British. I'm laughing as a British. <laughs> Britain. <laughs> That's not insulting or anything. No, never. <laughs> I mean it in the most fond way possible. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's just cringing at my terribleness. Like we're never going to watch her show. She makes fun of the British. It's not making fun. It's an, the most sincerest form of flattery is imitation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However badly done. However poorly done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, today, episode 27, we are talking about Lothair of France. Mm -hmm. um, who, if I had my notes up, because I'm ready. Yeah, she's um, so ready. Is also known as Lothair the Third or Lothair the Fourth. Take your pick. So, if you hear Lothair at all, this is probably who we're talking about, except for the five other Lothairs we've already talked about. Yep. Thanks for not being confusing, France. Thank you, Frankia. Thanks. Um, He's also a Carolingian, even though we promised you we were... Done. He is the, and I quote, penultimate uh -huh. Carolingian king of West Francia. So even though we've lied and said it at least twice now, <laughs> he is the actual last Carolingian. No. He isn't though, because, but I mean, penultimate. that's what it says. So I looked it up. Penultimate is last one in a series of things. Last but one in a series of things. Second last penultimate ah. chapter of the book second to I last thought penultimate was last i looked it up oh, i am wrong <laughs> so even in this episode as we're trying to do 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 correction, correction avenue, avenue. as we attempt to correct ourselves i am now correcting slightly us, us. me again yeah Watch it is he, penultimate means second to last second to last got it okay <sighs> So, just a little bit. Last week, we told you about Louis the Fourth of France from overseas, and he died while on a wolf hunt. That's really all you need to know about him. It's the most important thing is that we have not deviated from the normal character of Frankie, Frankie-ish kings, Frankie kings that die whilst hunting. Mm-hmm. It's a tradition that must go on. Yeah, they're not. Are, are you really a French king if you don't die while you're hunting? Exactly. Um, so Lothair was born um, in 941 in Léon. Um, and he is the eldest son of our king from 26, Louis IV. And his wife, Gerberga of Saxony. Mm-hmm. Um, and when his father died on September 10th of 954, um, while Lothair was 13, um, he became king and was crowned at Chiem on the 12th of November, 954. Yep. Mm hmm You ready for me? Those things happened. They all happened. Yep. So in case we forgot, uh, his father fell ill in 951 briefly when... Lothair was three years old. I'm sorry. I said that incredibly wrong. Let's rewind. 
So his father, Louis IV, fell ill in 951, just three years before Lothair actually took the throne. And his father made him the acting king at age 10. And this set off the royal line of succession custom since the founding of the Franks by the Merovingians. So this actually is uh, marked as when people started leaving things to their eldest sons. So oh, instead of like splitting it between sons. Right. So this is when they kind of marked it as a custom, I suppose. Ah. Like they acknowledged it. This is probably a good idea. the trend yeah. and made it a rule. So last week's main villain was Hugh the Great. He was the brother-in-law to Gerberga. 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 I remember her. Yeah. <laughs> Because we did the same thing we just did over and over. <laughs> Look, we're genuine people. We genuine le- genuinely love it. Yep. It will happen over and over again. Mm-hmm. So after Louis IV died, Gerberga made a pact with Hugh to be Lothair's regent over Aquitaine and Burgundy, mm-hmm. leaving Lothair a very broken up kingdom to rule. So, luckily for Lothair, Hugh the Great dies just three years later when Lothair was about 15 years old. And Lothair went... It's 13. Uh, no, Hugh the, di- Hugh the died. Hugh the dies. Hugh the Great died. Grants three years. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, his, the, the, the villain from last week, died <laughs> roughly three years into Lothair's reign. Is that... That register. Mm -hmm. Ah. And Lothair went under the guidance of his uncle on his mother's side from East Francia. The uncle's name was Bruno, who happened. Bruno. Bruno. East Frankish. Uh, And he was the brother to the king in East Frankia at the time. And that king we talked about a little bit last week was Otto That's who we left. Like, we kind of left off at um, Arnulf, right? Yes, we so split off. descendants of Arnulf. Okay. Right. Uh, so with Bruno's advice, Lothair bargained with Hugh the Great's two sons after Hugh died, giving Hugh Capet, a name you will hear Capet. later on. Capet. Hugh Capet. Capet. So he gave Hugh Capet, Paris, and the title, the Duke of the Franks, and the other brother... A different auto from the king. Auto, but not that auto. A different auto. <laughs> he gave him the Duchy of Burgundy. I googled it again just to be sure. You did not just check it again. No, not now. Oh. <laughs> Last night. <laughs> <laughs> just hoping desperately someone would agree with your dookie. <laughs> and then I decided, well, how is it pronounced in French? And it's like douche or douche. 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 <laughs> For those of you who don't know, they know. Ages ago, we had the discussion how to pronounce D U C H Y. Duchy. Duchy. And Caitlin almost <laughs> had me convinced. No, I had you convinced. She I had to come is... back and admit defeat the next yeah. episode. <laughs> That was back when we would not research in the middle of the episode. We would just go with whatever the person said. And she was so steadfast that that's Still what it am. was. And I just remember being like, that really doesn't settle right with me. <laughs> I stand by it. So now we're going to tell you a little bit more about him after Hugh the Great died. So even though he was a very young king... He really wanted to rule without guardianship and uh, punished his uh, authorities, pushed his authorities, not punished them. I was, I was going to wait and see if you figured it out. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> he really wanted to rule without guardianship and pushed his authority over his serfs. He, his urgency for independence came at the cost of his maternal connections over there in East Francia. And in an effort to rebuild those connections, in 966, he married the princess Emma of Italy uh, when she was 18 and he was 25. Any thoughts on the wife? Um, Yeah. So like like, uh, Clarissa said, is your name on the other side of the screen today or has it always been there? Uh, It's there for regular episodes. 
um, story. It's the opposite. We just recorded a story. Anyway. Um, so Mary's Emily, Emily of Italy. Is it Emma? Emily? No. <laughs> was Combined like, Emma and Italy. <laughs> such a different name. I really like the name Emma. Yeah. It is uh, my second. The new one, I think, is my new second favorite Jane Austen movie. I really liked the new Emma. So good. I can't believe it didn't get, like... I heard such horrible things about it. I waited a really long time to watch it. And I loved it. Me too. <sighs> it. I can't... It's like the the Keira Knightley, Pride and Prejudice, yeah. and Emma are here. Because yeah. um, the newest... What's his face? Um, possession, which is not... But I, it's the movie I'm currently watching. Ah. The newest actor? Oh, what's the my favorite Jane Austen movie? Persuasion. Is it? Mm-hmm. The one the newer one, like two thousand seven, but newer. Persuasion? Mm-hmm. Who's in it? I can't remember his name. What about the woman? I can't I don't Who's know the lead? her name. Which one's that about? Persuasion. It's where she um is it the one that came out with like Amazon? No, it, you can't. You have to purchase it to watch it. Keep talking. It has. Oh, is that guy's name? I feel like it's Hugh, but you're also talking about a Hugh, so I could just be thinking about it wrong. Like two thousand, yeah, two thousand seven. Emily Hawkins. That's what her name is. Emily Hawkins. Oh, I don't remember this one. Omg, it's my favorite Jane Austen movie. Ever. Hmm. Eva. What's his name? I don't remember this one. I'm working on it. Who was the actress? Just saw it. It was uh, here, right. Sally Hawkins. There it is. Where do you see it? Right. Um, I, I'm pointing, but you can't see no, where I'm I can't pointing. See it. Rupert Penry Jones. Down. Down. Right there. Sally Hawkins. Rupert Pen- Penry, Penry Jones. Mm-hmm. Penry. Like Henry, but not. But not. <laughs> <laughs> okay what are we doing today <laughs> we're reviewing jane austen movies <laughs> we digress <laughs> um you were telling me about the princess I'm emma telling of you Italy. about emily that's how we got emma. there i was joking <laughs> you couldn't tell because <laughs> i half see your face <laughs> you can see me on the screen oh, but i don't always look at it <laughs> Anyway, uh, yes, Mary's Emma of Italy. They have two sons. Louis V, who we will be talking about next week, um, was born 966, 967. Um, and then Otto. Another one? Yeah. Another Otto? Yeah. All right. I can't say his name in a, anything other than British accent. Otto. Otto. It sounds better than Otto. Otto. <laughs> Otto. We're so on point. <laughs> who was born in 970. Um, somewhere in the same timeline. He also has two illegitimate sons. Mm-hmm. With the sister of a certain Count Robert. Who we may or may not discuss later. Interesting. I was looking at you to see if we were discussing him later. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Mayor of the palace of his brother, Charles. Charles. Charlie. Charles. Charles. Um, the two sons, uh, another Arnolf, um, who's born around 967, and then Richard. What a perfectly normal name. Fascinating. Anyway. Hmm. Had to come, it had to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Richards. Had to evolve into current. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yep. So from here, we're going to dive into a series of many, many wars. In fact, too many. And to I dive into. Do not possess the talent or scholarly ability to even try to tell you about them. Nor is that the malarkey we really want to agree. Discuss. So the incredibly short version that I can tell you is he really wanted Lotharingia. Yeah, I got that. Everyone does. What's so great about Lotharingia? And at this point in history... Lothringia equals war. Yes. That's it's that. like um, the Holy Land. Right. <laughs> Just everyone battles over, over it forever and ever. Mm-hmm. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. 
So in our next slide, we show Lothair, um on the side of Caitlin and Charles <laughs> on my side. Well, Charles is his brother. Here he is. And he was... He didn't point. I pointed and you didn't. No. Other way. Right there. Right there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, his brother Charles, who's a duke, picked several fights with the Eastern Franks and I'm sure many other people. And Lothair was totally cool with it and on board, but what did else? not show public support. But in the background, he was like, go brother, go brother. Mm-mm. It's your birthday. Mm-mm. Get Lotharingia. <laughs> Yes. Like <laughs> well, um, you made that work. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on the back. You gotta, you gotta dust it off. Yeah, there you go. That was because it was so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this fairly quickly bit him in the butt. Behindy. When Charles took over Lothringia and then decided to make problems for his brother Lothair, who was our current king. Yeah. He even went so far as to accuse his wife, Emma, of sleeping with the Bishop of Lyon. Mm -hmm. They say it right? You did. I fully expected a correction. Mm -hmm. Uh, The accusation was so scandalous that they went before a court of sorts where she and the Bishop were actually found innocent. They were absolved. Mostly due to the incredible lack of evidence since it was really just Charles spreading rumors. Did you hear about Emma? Like, this is going too well. I got to start a rumor. Yeah. What's juicy? Yeah. Oh, let's make the queen an adulteress. Yeah. It always gets them going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they did expel, or Lothair did expel Charles. Yeah. He after was... spreading those nasty rumors. Bro, not cool. That's my wife. Can't say that stuff about my wife. Nope. Especially because he managed to land an older woman. Like, he's got to keep yeah. tabs. He, who married an older woman? He was 18. She was 25. Oh, I thought it was... Did I read that entirely wrong? Entirely wrong? Wince. She was 18. Yeah. Did you put Wince? I did. So what I read is when he was 18. <laughs> Never mind. He's got a younger woman. He's got a... But uh, he also has to keep tabs. He also has to keep tabs on her because, you know, she's so youthful and mm-hmm. vibrant. And he's old and 25. (laughs) Solid seven years older. (laughs) So in return of being banished, Charles was immediately rewarded by the Eastern Franks and granted a huge portion of Lotharingia in the north. So since that whole bit was, we'll call it settled, right? Put to rest. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Lothair focused his attention on Italy and decided to sack the imperial palace of Achaean for three whole days. And on his way out, he turned a bronze eagle that was put there by Charlemagne. From the eagle. The movie. Is it? It's a Roman eagle that they took when they conquered Britannia. Is it? Interesting. It's the same one. I'm going to say that it is. Mm. I tried to look into the bronze eagle of Charlemagne and I did not get a whole lot of info other than it's a really cool palace, but it definitely did not look the same that it does now. It's had improvements and I did not find an eagle other than it seems to just be mentioned. But it's like a thing at this time period. The Eastern Franks own that that castle that Charlemagne had originally built Mm -hmm. and they specifically point the eagle facing um, the Western Franks to show their dominance over the Western Franks. Like I can invade West Francia anytime I want. And so I'm looking at you. Yeah. Eyes on you, buddy. So Lothair decided to go over the opposite direction of Lothringia and mess up Aquitaine or Akian. And in the midst, on his way home, he turned that eagle to face the Eastern Franks. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a school prank, like you know, the rival school. They go over and like mess with the mascot. They what? They do something to like the parking lots or something. Yeah, like always in every high school movie. 
Toilet it's about paper sports. To school. Yeah. <laughs> Something. So in retaliation for messing with their eagle, the Eastern Franks uh, and Charles, he joined teams since his brother booted him, invaded West Francia while Lothair was over there messing with Akian. Uh, but Lothair, being the warrior king that he was, fought him off and sent them packing. Mm. Let's see. He arranged for his sons to be married and had him, his oh oldest son, to be married and had him crowned king of Aquitaine while Lothair was still ruling. Oh. In an effort to, like, kind of merge some power and get uh, Lothringia kind of tied up in a Western Frankish bow. It a didn't bow. really work out. And we'll tell you more about that next week. Because what that's a great story. Okay. <laughs> but that's all you get. It didn't ha- it, it just failed. That's all. And it did not improve Lothair's strength or guarantee him anything for Lotharingia. Mm-hmm. It just it fell apart. And this whole time during all of these wars that I did not go into detail about, mm-hmm. Hugh Capet emerged. Capet. Capet. Hugh emerged as a very strong leader. And opposition was making a name for himself. Mm-hmm. He was definitely doing that. And then uh, very suddenly and with very little information. Totally out of the blue. Very likely during hunting accident. I'm just going to make an assumption because he was 45. Yes, he did die suddenly in Leon, where it all began, um, on the 2nd of March, 986. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's he it. He was buried next to his father. Oh, really? Uh, Louis IV <laughs> in Saint-Rémy in Riem. Riem? Riem. Riem. I saw this video yesterday about how to pronounce. Tell me more. Don't tell Annie. Putting her in in my mouth. <laughs> so if you need to do R's in France, what you're supposed to do is take a pen or pencil. I put it out as hard as you can. And then say R. 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 You don't have a pen in your mouth. No. Well, then do your fingers. Ugh. 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 This is Ugh. this is top line entertainment. Chayam. 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 Fascinating. <laughs> okay, so now that he's dead. Yeah. I think we're ready to move on into... Well, just oh. last things last. Um, last things last. As we mentioned earlier, we are now in the tradition of it, the crown passing to his youngest son. So next week we will be talking oldest? about... Whatever I said, I meant oldest. Yeah. Um, so next week we will be talking about Louis V, his eldest son, who um, is the actual last Carolingian king. <laughs> <laughs> We promise. <laughs> we we looked this time. very far ahead. <laughs> Instead of just making jokes off the cuff, <laughs> for realsies, mm-hmm. next week is the last of the Merovingians. Carol Engines. Carol <laughs> <laughs> My brain doesn't work anymore. Shutting down. All right. I think it's time for a relevant tidbit. Yes, it is. Twelve Bizarre Medieval Trends by Francis White. From LiveScience.com. The Feast of Fools. So, okay, number 12, The Feast of Fools. Many people of the medieval Europe, of the medieval Europe, many people of medieval Europe joined together at the beginning of January to celebrate the Feast of Fools. We should celebrate that in January. We totally should. Do you know what day it is? I will make a note of it. Make a note. I'm going to make a note right now. Oh, when thank you, is Brain. The Feast of Fools. Fools Maybe in... we'll do a special episode. Exactly. Yeah. In January. Okay. Um, this eclectic event, like most Christian festivals, was inspired by a pagan festival, Saturnalia. January. Yeah. Um, And turn the status quo on its head, according to 
Sacred Folly, A New History of the Feast of Fools, printed at, by the Cornell University Press in 2011 by Max Harris. Thank you, Max. Thanks, Max. Uh, the highest respected officials swapped with the lowest. Serving maids became masters and a king of misrule was crowned. OMG, this is going to be fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Although originally intended to be confined only to the hallowed halls of churches, the common people took it upon themselves to celebrate. There were parades, comic performances, costumes, cross-dressing, body songs, and of course, drinking to excess. Woohoo! Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Okay, that's it for today. Yeah, everybody. That's all we got. Episode 27. Yeah. To Terra France, we'll talk about Louis next week. The Sank. Louis Le Sank. Sure. Thank you, Frenchie. Uh, <laughs> yes. You can find us at royalmalarkey.com. Check out our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And find us on YouTube at our network, Aversion TV. Please hit the like button and subscribe and share this video. Yes, please. Um, and if you are a steadfast podcast listener, please rate and review us on iTunes so we can keep bringing you this extremely relevant and useful information. Very important information that if you did not know. Now you do. Now you do. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't come up with a I threat. <laughs> Okay, we will see you next, next week. week.